even know these places existed. So here we are at the Coomera Boatworks. Uh, so excited, just so surreal coming in here. It's like it's finally happening. So we saved up for the last two years, a bit longer. Um, We've quit our jobs now, investment property sold, we're ready to go and uh, yeah, just pulling up to this boatyard here and just seeing all these beautiful boats sitting on the hard there, my heart just kind of skipped a few beats but uh, yeah, so we're going to look at a couple of catamarans first towards the end of our budget but yeah, we just keep getting drawn to these cats, the space. For what we want to do. what we want to do, spearing, pulling in the shallow anchorages and um, going out to the barrier reef. You know, a week, week or more of just looking at boats and getting a feel for them and seeing what's around and, and just get used to like dealing with brokers and everything so we'll see what happens. So, oh well, wish us luck. Let's Update lot. you soon. See ya. Okay, so the first boat today is a 36 Granger. The unique thing we've discovered about the Australian cat market is most boats are built by the owner themselves or by someone the owner is employed and it's usually just under an Australian design. We weren't huge fans of low headroom and decided that this would be one of our main comfort requirements going forward. We also found a bit of delamination on the top deck so we ruled this one out pretty quickly. We then checked out a newer Granger which was out of our budget but we just really wanted a reference point to see what more money would get you really. I don't know if we want to go on this one or not. <laughs> it's only 33, 34 foot. Yeah, 34 foot. Nice boat, huh? So nice this boat. Out of the budget. It's a little small though. <laughs> it's I small, yeah. The forward cabins are tiny, like it's just they're just single berths, so. Well, wow, there's the one double down here. I think I'd rather a mono in this size. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but that's why we're looking, so yeah, I love how open it is, but you know. Yeah, you can see the difference. This is 2005. Yeah. So that's what, 10 years. I love this. This, is, this is what gets me on the cats every time. So much outdoor space, and and then you've got the tramps on the front as well. I like that. I like the little uh... little sailing hat. I'm not sold on the outlet. No, I think that's not a bad idea. It's definitely cheaper. Next was a racing cat. Definitely not for us, as comfort wasn't at the forefront of the builder's mind when constructed, which is fine, but just not what we're after as liverboards. What do you think, Michael? It's definitely big enough, but... I don't know the right feeling. A little bit Too much dark, work to do. A little bit dark. You can see mold, mold build. No, it's too, the headroom's crazy low. I mean, here's fine. Yeah, Where you are, it's no good, so look. On a 43 foot boat. Okay, you can see. stand in the middle there, no worries. No. <laughs> there you can. That's the engine. Hmm. And there's just lots of work to do. All the hatches have been fully, they're just full glass hatches, so there's no light. We learned a lot in that first day, but we didn't see anything we really loved, and we still had a long list to get through. The next day, we probably didn't do ourselves any favours, as we looked at a boat that was way above our budget. Uh, it was a turnkey setup, it was a light wave 35, and it had everything we needed. As we mowed it out on the tender, we absolutely fell in love with it. Alright, what do we got here, Michael? What's this one? It's a lightweight 35. Lightweight 35, beautiful. Breeze, it's beautiful. Big bed, too. Mm, it's not too high, like a bit more headroom. Yeah. 
Oh, head hot. Get in. <laughs> Spear guns. No idea. No, it's no right. <laughs> wow. That's so fine. Get out of the way. Yeah, we did it. Just a little bit cheap. But, you know, ready to go. Mmm. And they probably pushed the bottle a bit too much. Unfortunately, it was a bit over our budget, and while we had the money to buy it, we wouldn't have had much left over for cruising and would have put us back to work pretty much straight away. We made an offer with what we could afford, but it was knocked back. No surprises there, but it was worth a try. We decided we had to walk away and now, unfortunately, compared everything to this beautiful boat. The next few days were a blur, looking at a couple more monohulls, more catamarans and hearing more information than we'd ever remember. We saw some shocking boats with dodgy repair jobs and met some really good brokers and some not so good ones. Yeah, so far we looked at cats, um, yeah we're going to look at a lot of monos as well, just, just get a good feel and make a decision at the end, you know. We ended up doing 6,000 k's in the car and drove all the way up to Townsville basically from Sydney. We've looked at 12, 12, boats. 12 boats. It's good though, I'm glad we came up. We've got a better idea of what we want. We came up here looking for a mono because we really only thought that, that we could afford a budget. mono. Pretty much ruled monos out at this stage. Why I'm leaning towards the cat now is because I think of all the places that we want to go. We want to go to offshore reefs, we want to go to little atolls in the middle of nowhere. Even when we were living in Tonga, we were going into tiny little islands. There's no, it's not really an anchorage. Um, the wind's just going to come straight over the top mm, of that there's island. There's no wind so protection at all. If a lot of those places that we want to go, which is why we want a boat, um, you really a cat's going to be so much more comfortable. I think it's just about choosing what's best for us. That's what we're looking for at the moment. Um, there's nothing that really grabs our attention yet. We're looking at two more tomorrow. We looked at the, the Raven, which was a South African boat. That was yeah, quite the Raven nice. 30 is only yeah. nine and a half meters. Or yeah. Close to, yeah, just about 30 foot. Is it was it? quite tidy. like. For a 30 foot boat, yeah. it had so much usable yeah. space. It was really well designed. I don't know, maybe? It's maybe, in a it's maybe, a maybe pile. pile, yeah. It might just be a little bit too small, I think, for us. <laughs> I'm glad we came up. A lot more experience mm -hmm. now dealing with brokers, yep. the processes involved in actually what happens when you try to buy a boat. Yeah, they seem to be taking us a lot more seriously now that we're actually here. Also, we've picked up a few extras that haven't even been on the market, so the one tomorrow that we're looking at hasn't, hasn't been, been on the market yet. yet so. So. This is the 37 foot easy. It hadn't been listed yet and the broker, Phil from multi Hull Solutions, seemed confident that it might be the perfect fit for us. Unfortunately, the current owner was sick and unable to enjoy her as much as he once did, so was keen to sell her on to someone who could give her as much attention as all boats need. Our first impression was that she was open and roomy, but a little bit dated for a 2006 model. As soon as I stepped on board, I fell in love, but Michael wasn't sold. She was big and spacey, and you could see the ocean from every inch inside. Straight away, I could see the potential with a bit of a facelift. Michael was on the fence, still comparing everything to the light wave that we'd looked at earlier in the week. He was also wondering if there was enough storage for all our toys on board. Definitely not ready to go, you need new rigging. It's not really set up for blue water. New rigging. The front's nice though. It's a big boat. Yeah. Very like beamy. It's very beamy, yeah. The next boat was a Simpson, which was immaculate and built to survey, but was lacking the big roomy feel that the Easy had. It also had a higher price tag with diesel engines. I don't know what it was about this boat, but it just didn't seem to do it for us. It could be Sorry. Does it have a flushing toilet and shower? Uh, yes. On the other side? The rooms okay. were a lot smaller and darker, but the storage was huge and the wiring was immaculate. Look at that. I can't look at I made. <laughs> we had a lot to think about. These two boats really stood out from the bunch. Um, we've spent the last week looking at yachts to buy. 
Uh, we found a lot of good ones, but uh, yeah, it's it's a lot to take in. We're uh, we're gonna Over it. yeah <laughs> we're good. we're just gonna have a little break. We need to go spearing, you know, clear the head. We just gave Tim a ring. We're heading over to his place now to pick up the boat. We're gonna tow it up the coast. We're gonna go dive the Barrier Reef, which should be awesome. Haven't been there for a while. Uh, hopefully get some nice trout, some jacks, all this tasty reef fish that we don't get in Sydney. And then after that, we're gonna head up to Airlie Beach to look at another yacht. Late start, probably get in at midnight, sleep at the boat ramp, launch at 3 a.m., drive out. Something like that. It's gonna be wrecked. Yeah, it's always fun. Hello, puppy. <laughs> Hello, how are ya? Kilo Red Emperor swimming down there. Oh. 42 feet, sorry. Orange spot sea perch, they call it. I just found this wicked bommy, <sighs> wicked bommy full of red bait. I thought it was a saddle tail, uh, paddle tail. I thought, well, they got sick, you don't shoot those. And then I saw him, I was like, oh, it's orange spot. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Epic, don't I've lose that bommy, it's going off. <laughs> It was so nice to push the reset button by getting out for a dive and reminding ourselves why we were about to part with our life savings. Spending this glassy day out on the barrier reef and sitting here edit this video in the middle of our boat refit is just what I need to keep the motivation levels high. Being able to come back from a dive, have a hot shower, a cold beer, fill the fish off the back of the boat is what our dreams are made of. So, apparently, Tim reckons these surgeons Dusimir surgeon, I think. Really good eating. So we'll give it a go. Do you normally shoot them? Not, not usually, but um, yeah, I know the Hawaiians love them. We've got a few in Tonga as well, but uh, yeah, apparently this one's really nice eating. Have they got the spike as at the like the yeah, others? Yeah, this one doesn't have like the blade, but that has like a really nasty backwards facing hook there. Oh yeah. That would. Wreck your day pretty fast. <laughs> anyway, see how it looks. Meat definitely looks good. Mm, so what? 
What do you think? It's strange. Oh, it's got this crazy, like, hard fat on it. Really why it tastes so good. Give us a sh Oh, yeah, all that white lines. Oh, that's the just stomach lining. But yeah, but... Look at this, fat. Yeah. Even that here, that's what I was talking mm, about. Look at that. Let's just peel the skin off it. It's like those healthy kingfish that you get. Well, that's what the Hawaiians do, don't they? Just chuck the whole fish on and then peel the skin off. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so I've just salted and sugared it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it does is take all the moisture out of it. That is the most disgusting haircut I have ever had. Jesse, <laughs> Jesse had warned me and I didn't listen. I'm sorry you have to look at this. Salt takes the moisture out, the sugar like counteracts the salt. You look under there, that's been about 10 minutes. It's all the liquid coming out of the fish. So it kind of intensifies the flavor and um, takes that wateriness, especially when you have fish that's really fresh, that's a big problem. And yeah, just rinse it off quickly before you cook it. How good does that meat look too? See all the fat layers in there, it looks really good. It looks amazing. Marbling, it's like wagyu. Mm. So there's the fish, salted and sugared. See all the moisture that's come out of it there. So you're just washing off the salt and just sugar. Just wash all that salt and sugar off there. It's so much firmer already. Good. Shooting one again? Oh yeah, they're not safe now. <laughs> Join us next episode where we continue our search further north. You see the rot on the back there? Yeah. Look at more boats. Drop yeah, catch some huge mud crabs. I nearly lose Just push. <laughs> and we end up finally making an offer okay, on the boat of our dreams. Cheers, have a good day. I looked in the cave and there was red bait everywhere and I was poking the bait out with the gun and there was something on the ground and I grabbed it like this and I pushed it out of the way like there was a rock. I grabbed the wobby's mouth and I pushed it out of the way. <laughs> you can do that for now. Yeah, you can go out of the fish. Oh, you just, you just take it easy. <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, thoughts on, thoughts on that one, Michael? Yeah. yeah. It just had a bad, just had that old heap of shit vibe to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? A lot of them seem to have that. It's so. been confusing for Jess, because she's been <laughs> dealing with most of the brokers. She actually called, one called back <laughs> following up the other day. It's like, oh, how did you go with those boats? And she says, oh, yeah. We had one this morning, yeah, I didn't like it, it was really dirty, and that was the broker that showed us that boat that at she was bad-mouthing. <laughs> she wasn't going off at him at least, it was hilarious.